If you're a frontline healthcare provider, a nurse, paramedic, or emergency physician, you already know that every second counts in the emergency department. And when a patient suddenly collapses, there's one question that can define the next few minutes. To shock or not to shock? That's right. Recognizing cardiac rhythms and knowing which ones are shockable versus non-shockable can literally save a life. So today, we're going to make this crystal clear. We'll dive deep into ACLS rhythm recognition, understand the mechanisms, ECG features, and emergency responses, so that the next time you face a cardiac arrest, you'll know exactly what to do. Every year, thousands of people suffer cardiac arrest both inside and outside hospitals. The first few minutes are absolutely critical because the brain can survive only a few minutes without oxygen. And during those moments, your rhythm recognition skills determine whether the patient gets an electric shock or chest compressions or both. That's the foundation of ACLS, Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support. It's not just about protocols. It's about understanding what's happening inside the heart. A CLS divides all cardiac arrest rhythms into two major categories. One, shockable rhythms, where electrical defibrillation can help restore a normal rhythm. Two, non-shockable rhythms, where shocking won't help, and CPR with drug therapy is the mainstay. When you attach an AED to a patient, it does exactly that. It analyzes the electrical activity of the heart and decides shock advised or no shock advised. Let's understand these categories one by one, starting with the shockable rhythms. The two major shockable rhythms are one, ventricular tachycardia, VT, two, ventricular fibrillation, VF. Let's look at them closely. Ventricular tachycardia, or VT, is a life-threatening arrhythmia originating from the ventricles, the lower chambers of the heart. In VT, the ventricles beat too fast, often over 100 beats per minute, sometimes exceeding 150 or even 200. Because of this, the heart doesn't get enough time to fill properly, and blood flow drops drastically. On an ECG, VT looks like this wide, bizarre QRS complexes, more than 120 milliseconds, hidden or absent P waves, because they're buried within the QRS complexes, a regular but very fast rhythm. Visually, the ECG looks like sharp mountain peaks, wide, tall, and rapid. VT can present in two forms. Monomorphic VT, where all QRS complexes look similar, and polymorphic VT, where QRS shapes vary, like in Torse de Dupont. If this rhythm is sustained, it can lead to severe hypotension, loss of consciousness, and cardiac arrest. Now, the key question, is it shockable? Yes. If the patient has no pulse, defibrillation is immediately indicated. The AED will advise a shock, because an electric shock can interrupt the abnormal rhythm and allow the heart's natural pacemaker, the SA node, to take control again. After the shock, continue CPR for two minutes, then reassess. Now let's talk about the most chaotic rhythm of them all, ventricular fibrillation, or VF. In VF, the ventricles don't contract in any organized way. Instead, they quiver erratically due to disorganized electrical impulses. This means the heart is not pumping blood at all. No cardiac output, no pulse, no oxygen delivery to the body. On the ECG, VF appears as completely irregular, wavy lines, with no clear QRS, no P waves, and no pattern. There are two forms, coarse VF, where the waves are larger and early defibrillation is more likely to succeed, and fine VF, where the waves are smaller and the rhythm is often mistaken for a systole. Ventricular fibrillation is the most common cause of sudden cardiac arrest, especially during or right after a heart attack. And just like VT, VF is shockable. Defibrillation is the only effective treatment. Every minute without defibrillation reduces the chance of survival by about 10%. That's why rapid recognition and immediate shock are crucial. After each shock, resume CPR for two minutes before reassessing rhythm and pulse. Even though VT and VF are shockable, CPR should never be delayed while preparing the defibrillator. Chest compressions maintain minimal circulation to the brain and heart until the next shock is delivered. 
high-quality CPR with proper rate and depth keeps oxygen flowing when the heart can't. So remember the sequence. CPR, followed by shock, followed by CPR, followed by reassessment. Now let's shift gears. There are rhythms where shocking won't help. These are called non-shockable rhythms. They include one, a systole, and two, pulseless electrical activity. Let's understand why defibrillation doesn't work in these cases. A systole is complete absence of electrical activity in the heart. The monitor shows a flat, straight line. No P waves, no QRS, no life. It's usually the final rhythm before death, often following untreated VF or prolonged cardiac arrest. In a systole, defibrillation has no target. There's no electrical activity to reset. That's why AEDs never advise a shock in a systole. The only treatment is high-quality CPR and addressing reversible causes, the famous H's and T's, hypoxia, hypovolemia, hydrogen ion or acidosis, hypothermia, hyperkalemia, and tension pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, thrombosis, coronary or pulmonary. Every second counts in finding what caused the arrest and reversing it. In PEA, the monitor may look normal. You might even see organized electrical activity. But when you check the patient, there's no pulse. This happens when the heart's electrical system is working, but the muscle isn't contracting effectively. It's like the power's on, but the engine won't start. PEA can be caused by severe hypoxia, massive blood loss, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, or electrolyte imbalances. Again, shocking won't help here. The treatment is immediate CPR, along with identifying and correcting the underlying cause. Let's quickly recap. The simple table can guide you in any resuscitation scenario. If the AED says, shock advised, deliver the shock and continue CPR. If it says, no shock advised, continue CPR and search for reversible causes. Remember, defibrillation corrects electrical chaos. CPR maintains blood flow. Teamwork saves lives. In cardiac emergencies, knowledge isn't power. It's survival. The more you practice rhythm recognition, the faster your response becomes. So keep revising your ACLS rhythms, practice with mock codes, and stay updated with latest guidelines. And if you found this lesson helpful, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share it with your colleagues. Because spreading knowledge saves more lives than any single intervention. Thank you for watching. And remember, when seconds count, your confidence and your calm can make all the difference.